also talked about that plan with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. Lacey Crisp is live at Cathedral Square. Lacey. Listecki says he'll meet with any survivor who wants to talk with him. He tells me he hopes this plan will help the survivors and allow the church to get back to its ministry. The plan is organized basically in, in such a way so that we can continue our work. So we, we can still be there to offer spiritual assistance and educational assistance and, um, you know, and charitable assistance to those in the, in the entire church that need it, um, as the gospel demands us to do. Listecki admits this plan does not change the past, but he hopes it will help both the church and victims move forward. Do you think this plan goes far enough? It, 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 it goes far, far enough in the sense of uh, its responsibility, yes, it is. But can anything ever go far enough? Can anything ever kind of re restore you know, the, that which is lost? And that's why I, as a, um, an archbishop, always come back and, and always say kind of that I stand with those who are angry about this. I, I stand with those who are hurt by this, shamed by this. Listecki explains the church will pay penance for the abuse. The church will likely go into debt by $7 million through this reorganization. But he adds church members and Catholic school students hopefully won't feel the impact. It will kind of hamper our ability as, a, as an archdiocese to, to serve those needs. But, but you know, um, the, the wonderful as aspect is I think, you know, um, individuals will come forward, those who work in ministry, will come forward, we'll uh, lock our, our arms together and, and do the work of the gospel. And Listecki adds the church is much different today because of the sex abuse. Now he says the church is working towards preventing child abuse both within the church and in the community. Reporting live in Cathedral Square, Lacey Crisp, today's TMJ4. All right, thank you, Lacey. And we caught up with parishioners leaving Mass at Jesu Church. They seem to be encouraged by the plan. Love is best expressed in action, in words. That's a quote from St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. Love is best expressed in action. And any time that we can increase that record and have that opportunity, I think it's a very positive uh, movement towards more transparency. So a big development today, but how did the church get to this point? Charles Benson joins us with that. Well, it all depends on where you want to start. The pre-sex abuse scandal dates back decades, but the bankruptcy case started three years ago. In January of 2011, the Milwaukee Archdiocese filed for bankruptcy. At that time, the Milwaukee, Milwaukee Catholic Church was facing a growing pre-sex abuse crisis. 575 people filed a claim against the Archdiocese, and the Archdiocese believes none of those claims is legally allowable, allowable because of the statute of limitations. Some claims were part of previous settlements. The Archdiocese estimates 125 will be eligible for the $4 million compensation settlement. A big part of the bankruptcy case and the battle over the money has been over the church's controversial cemetery trust fund worth nearly $60 million. Abuse survivors wanted that money. The bankruptcy court concluded it was off limits. The church has spent nearly $11 million in legal fees. About half of that went to lawyers for sex abuse victims. Now the case could be in the final stages. The plan still has to be approved by the bankruptcy court. Mike and Carol? Still not totally over. Thank you, Charles. Here's what's next. There will be court proceedings to go over that plan. Then a judge will rule on it. He or she can approve or deny parts of it. We're gonna have more coverage at TMJ4.com.